Oh yeah. I was like, there I, we I can't go. Hear you. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you want yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. How about if how about if you do a 360 like if you do another turn, like another oh okay. No, just leave it. No, just leave it the other way. <laughs> Wait, should I try and flip it the other way around? Try and see. Okay. So okay, it can make, try and see if you can make a landscape. That better? No, no, go another turn on that side. That that's fine. You can leave it like that. That'll yeah? work. Yeah, Are that'll you sure? work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying Linda. to think if I'm doing something wrong. Mujevale, Mujevale, Mujevale. My name is Bani Kibuka and welcome to another episode of the Ugandan Ball Talk Show. The, the, I don't know how they call the button that lets you like flip the screen. Is it like, it's it's like a camera and it has like these things like, okay, I think no, I know. It's, it's, no, it's like a lock. It's like a padlock with like a round, like a like an arrow that makes a circle. If you slide down on your phone oh that, oh my gosh i feel like such a grandma and i'm gonna yeah. leave this in the podcast so people are gonna hear that and they're gonna say it. <laughs> yeah that's perfect good 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 all right i'm gonna mm-hmm. leave that i'm gonna leave that clip in here so people oh can my see. gosh <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh lynn is already being a classic clown okay Back the literally have a clown trust me <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. my god thinking head up head down mm-hmm. just feel comfortable you can do whatever you want i'll take a sprite this is not i'm not advertising sprite it's the only drink i have so <laughs> do you know what i actually have some sprite in my fridge that exactly would be we, we... nice we can make this podcast about maybe Sprite will will sponsor it after we release. Yeah. It. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do something. That. Let me bring my Sprite. <laughs> Let me bring it. Sprite will sponsor. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And if you want to get your life right. Holy cow! <laughs> the, the, sprite? the Sprite, the Sprite in the UK looks different from the Sprite in the United States, but it's all Sprite, so great taste. Um, let's see. If great taste. There. 100% natural flavors. I have corn. that. I have that. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, welcome to my podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I am in a weird space, but I'm very okay. okay. Very okay. Yeah. yeah. How are you? Yeah. How's your day? My day was good to start. Oh, yeah. When, when it clocked around like three. Um, so I work in aviation and we work at the airport. Yeah. So then we help out at the airport. So I got a call to go to the airport and it was hot. It's hot as hell in the US. I, I know like you guys what were... What temperatures are we talking? Like real, real hot? Like it's Africa real, real hot. hot. Yeah, like Africa hot. Actually, oh what, some some of my friends at work were saying it feels like Uganda here, even though they've never been to Uganda. But yeah, it was hard and I had to go there and it was a stupid call because these pilots wanted me to clean their windows because they can't see. And they made me go up there, clean them in, in Not the summer in this heat. heat. I know. Oh, God. But yeah, the day was good. Um, can't complain. And then my boss said, That's hey, you've worked, you've worked so hard this week. You you can't come. You, you should not come in tomorrow if you don't want to. So I got fired off. So Yeah, that deserves a hand clap. So exactly, I kind of gave it away a little bit when I was welcoming you to podcast. That oh no, when we're doing the sprite thing, that it looks different from the UK. But I also have the question: like, where are you catching this podcast from? I might say UK, and you're in freaking Paris or something. (laughs) I am in the UK. I'm in London, UK, South London to be exact, because it's the best part of London. Okay. I don't come up with the rules. I don't make the rules. They just are what they are. <laughs> so reporting live from South London, yeah. That, that's nice. That's nice. And I'm sure by this time you know what you how you ended up on my podcast. How would they end up on this guy's podcast? 
but I had <laughs> I had Hakim on the podcast. Yes. Um yes. he was a great guy. His episode was really good. I like I enjoyed talking to him. And... It's so insightful speaking to him. Mm-hmm. You feel like I feel like with every conversation I have with that man, I learn at least three things like mm-hmm. from every single conversation. Right. He's just so he 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 really studies life mm-hmm. and he really studies everything yeah. and everyone and it's just really wonderful how he puts things and discussions together mm-hmm. and just makes it make sense i don't know he's a genius yeah he is he, i was gonna say i was gonna say he's a genius because the first question i asked him on the podcast was how is life and like yeah. he had and a he lot to in. say about life i was like <laughs> this is what i want this is what i want and we just went out the but toward, towards the end of his episode, I or towards of the end of each episode I do, I ask a question that I'm going to ask you. Where mm-hmm. Then your name came up somewhere and they recommended you to be on the podcast. But he he also said, mm-hmm. look out, Linda talks. <laughs> and <laughs> I, think, I think I need to find that clip again and just put it in this episode <laughs> to see why he said. Somewhere. Linda is, is crazy. <laughs> Linda's just she's like I absolutely love Linda. She's crazy, but yeah. so intelligent. She's so engaging. She's so articulate, but she's crazy. That's the old like yeah. That, get ready because she's going to bring <laughs> intelligence and craziness Incredible. to your podcast. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll open it somewhere, but yeah. Even just before. In your introduction, the conversation was really rolling, and that's something I like. And yeah, that's, that's why I told you I make these freestyle, and we just get into it. So I'm I glad. Love to... it. By the way, I really enjoy your podcasts. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I was that. watching. Um, which one was I watching today? I hadn't seen um, Musung Musunguzi. Musa Musunguzi. Yeah. 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 I remember um, I've been on like Ugandan Twitter for a hot minute and I remember okay. always seeing his name or seeing like his content. So it was mm-hmm. really cool just to like get a backstory because I feel like, you know, when you see people on online, mm-hmm. you can't help but dehumanize somebody because they're behind <laughs> the screen. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. So it's always nice when you when someone's just there and just telling their story. Mm-hmm. I really, I really like it. And that's how... I came up with the idea. I'm like, I love talking to people. It's crazy. And I was going to say that it's crazy that you and I have never talked before. But like, it's crazy I how know. I sit down with somebody and have a whole conversation with somebody you've never spoken before. Like, like we sit down and talk. You that's know, what like, I love about podcasts. And that's yeah. what I love about talking to fellow podcasters. Because we just, I think it's a natural thing. Yeah. Yeah, you just either have you nothing. got it or you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so Linda, um, you may you said some I don't even remember what you said somewhere, but about Uganda. So mm. and I know you're from Uganda. Damn unless, right. unless you think otherwise. So where in Uganda do you come from? So I'm from northern Uganda. Okay. I'm from well, was Kitgum, but I'm officially from Lamwa, which is um, basically just above Kitgum. Um, but when I'm there, I reside, all my family's in Kitgum. So growing up, it's always been I'm from Kitgum. Um, but officially, my village is Ogoro, which is basically just on the South Sudan border. Okay. Yeah. Ogoro. That's funny but because... But I still bleed black, yellow, red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... I was trying to surprise you with like how you guys greet, but I failed. So, like, <laughs> Cause I was going to hit you with that. The first thing, like when I have your first, I was just going to find how you guys greet, but I do failed. Do you want me to teach you some? Please do. All right. Let me teach you some basic actually. Mm-hmm. So to greet, in fact, um, so what language do you speak by the way? So I'm a Mugan, actually my mom is Kenyan. My dad is Ugandan. Uh-huh. So okay. I speak Luganda, and yeah. I speak Swahili. Oh, and then I speak a little bit of Kalenjin because my mom is a Nilotic. No way. Yeah. Okay. So she's a Nilotic, and she speaks Kalenjin, 
You've got From... the real East African mix going on here. Exactly. I like yep. this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I totally like Kalenjin as an allotic language. Um, so for us, say your classic, how you'd say Jebaleko or something like that, mm -hmm. we'd say a foil, which is basically like thank you. Yeah. I think like I've heard that one, yeah, a foil. But then if it's like, um, how are you? Itie nining. Itie nining. Itie nining. Yeah. Then you'd answer, atie ma bear. Atie ma bear. Yeah, I've heard those words, but I just couldn't connect with them. Itie yeah. nining. Itie nining. Itie nining. Mm -hmm. I like bell. the way you said it. You even said it like a real actually very because nice. I have some I have some Kalenjin in me. Um uh -huh, in my, that in my mom that was coming through. I like it. In my mom's language, they say like how they greet say chamge and then you say chamge. Chamge. Yeah, and then chamge. you respond chamge me sing. Chamge me sing. Uh -huh. mm. <laughs> that's uh, that's how they greet. So that's a little dialectic. Oh, uh, so yeah. Now, where you, because speaking to um, Hakim, he was mm -hmm. born in Uganda. He He's from Uganda, but he was, he moved here when he was younger. How was your yeah. story like? Um, were you, how did you grow up in Uganda or when did you decide to move? Um, so, oh, sorry, I was having a bit of a choking moment there because of the, the, spray? the drink that I was going to name. Uh, no, I'm joking, it's this. <laughs> 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 they might cancel our, our uh, promotional sponsoring. So I was born here in the UK. Um, born and raised here my whole life. But I started going to Uganda when I was about seven, seven years old. This would have okay. been 2003. That's the first time I went to Uganda. Okay. And it was a really interesting period to go because the LRA was still sort of active. Mm -hmm. So when it was time for us to travel um, up country, we had to use Eagle Air because if you were traveling by road at that time, if you didn't travel in a convoy, you were going to end up in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Wow. But, so you, um, you would just fly there? I would just fly there okay. um, and I would go every year at least once a year since then with the exception of maybe 2004 mm -hmm. to six but after that it was like literally every year yeah. sometimes twice a year okay i'm addicted to my country yeah i love the country <laughs> i see i can tell i see that and like Actually, the whole episode we had with Akim was about us, the diaspora, like how people back in Uganda think we don't love Uganda or like because we, we moved here or because we grew up here. Like we are Sorry. so, yeah. you know, like we had a whole episode to show that and to show them like how we love our country, like yeah. to go back home, all that. So you grew up here. Uh, no, you, I say here. You're in freaking <laughs> UK. <I> mean, so, <laughs> so how was your uh, background like and with your siblings and your family like growing up? So um, I'm one of four, well, one of five on my dad's side. I'm the second born on my dad's side, but I'm my mom's first and only child. Mm, nice. Um, so... In my eyes, I am mm -hmm. the best child. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and no one can convince me. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I see it. I see it, too. <laughs> you right? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh um, so mm -hmm. um, both of my mom and dad, they moved here, like, in the... In the, my dad moved here in the 80s, mm -hmm. and then my mom moved late 80s, coming to 90s, I want to say. I think it would have been late 80s. Okay. Um, so my dad was doing, like, uni here, was here on a scholarship. Um, and then my mom, 
I don't know whether my mum left because of the situation home mm-hmm. or some or just to change her life. I don't know. Right. I'll I'll come back to you on you, that. You're if- fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of people move for different reasons, but yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, so, the listeners will find it out ne- another time after we do we make research. Out. Yeah. Do you have any family back like that remained back home? I mean, of course, I think you do because there's so many. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's so many. In fact, most of my like first cousins are are back home. Um, but here we have a really big community of Acholi people. Okay. So I've grown up with loads of family friends mm-hmm. in fact for a lot of us actually believe that we were related oh wow but then when someone is like oh i'm from kitgum i'm from mm-hmm. gulu i'm from mm-hmm. Padea, it's like oh how are we from completely <laughs> different places if we're right. related that yeah. doesn't make sense to me <laughs> <laughs> and then you grow up and you ask your mom now who am i really related to <laughs> and then the list that was like this becomes yeah. like this <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think that's how we were brought up too. Like you grow up thinking like you're related to this person, but in real sense, they might be family friends, but the parents yeah. like it's just telling you, "Oh, you're related to that person," but which is honestly, not. <laughs> I don't know why they do that, but I mean, I guess it helps in some way, you know, keeping yeah. the community strong. In the perspective of that, like, because in the US, when you meet another person from Uganda, that's mm. like you're related like you know because you have something that unites you in an outside mm-hmm. country so like mm-hmm. they're like yeah like people would think you're really actually even the the americans will they'll think you're related because you're coming from again think speaking of that do you ever mm. have people ask you like like in the uk like hey i have a friend he's from rakai yeah. No, no, no. Actually, that's you guys. Not even right I have there. a friend from South Africa. Zimbabwe. Oh. Yeah. Zimbabwe. Classic. Do you know him? Do you... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? This used to happen when I was a bit younger, but it used to happen with like older white people. Mm-hmm. They'd, I'd be, they'd be like, oh, where are you from? You know? I'm, oh, I'm from Uganda. And back before, a lot of people knew what you get like oh even know of uganda either you knew of uganda because of idi amin Mm -hmm. or at that generation in time you knew (laughs) of uganda because of well actually still you know still about idi amin because you know raid on entebbe all of this Mm -hmm. kind of stuff yeah we was making the papers for the wrong reason anyway (laughs) yeah that's the same thing like people they know about Idi Amin. Everybody you find, like those older white men, is like, oh yeah, Idi Amin, Idi Amin. And like some well, of us don't even... Someone asks you, oh yeah, where are you from? Uganda. Oh, Idi Amin. And like, you're <laughs> supposed to be really excited and you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah that he was, yeah, that's the guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I re- when somebody hits me with Idi Amin, I don't really have allowed to say because i wasn't there but i've seen movies you know? like that's all i can tell you <laughs> the same thing you watch is something i can tell you but yeah. like i wasn't there so yeah that's that's pretty cool like sharing some of the um moments of that i'm gonna switch gears a little bit to okay. one of the things i want to ask you about so mm-hmm. how come where did you get the name of or oh, well, who appointed you or who elected you to be the minister of enjoyment and how did that come up self-appointed actually no tell a lie Mm -hmm. it was appointed by my people of enjoyment okay (laughs) (laughs) okay here's what it is yeah anytime i go out i like to describe myself as an extroverted introvert Mm -hmm. Or whatever the order is when when you're with people, you become the life of the party. Mm-hmm. You just love to enjoy people's presence and yeah. being around people gives you energy. And mm-hmm. then when you're by yourself, you're like, okay, humans are too much right now, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. So when I'm with people, 
I just get so like I feel really full and especially around the right type of energy I yeah. it just I'm like an energy magnet and then everyone's energy is like yeah <laughs> just filling you up <laughs> <laughs> filling me up and then I just turn into a confetti cannon of enjoyment mm. and non-stop party after party party after party I see that <laughs> actually I think I think we have something in common because that's the same way I feel like when I'm mm. around people like mm-hmm. the, that, that that creates my vibe and like recently we just went down to Orlando yeah it was Orlando with my buddy yeah I saw uh, that it looks fun birthday. your birthday right yeah happy and belated birthday by the way thank you thank you I appreciate that. So we go down there. We have a group of friends. We're all like from different countries in Africa. All the guys who I have a cousin, I had two cousins on the trip who were from Kenya, but we mm-hmm. had a guy from Zimbabwe. We had a guy from Cameroon, um, Ethiopia. So we're all down there for celebration and then the Arsenal. But like hanging out with those guys, they're friends we just made. Like, but it's just a vibe that hanging out with them we we linked together and we went to this tailgate party where we played our own african music mm-hmm. in, the midst, in the midst of all like the the people who came there to see arsenal um and like everybody even the white folks were just coming to our party because it's just it was just fun like the everybody vibe was, was contagious like, right uh-huh. yeah. yes and we took we took like a big speaker and we just hooked up to our car and just make our own music right there. Oh, that so is like, the best. That the was best like type of fun. Uh huh. That was my favorite. So you're the minister of enjoyment. Mm-hmm. Where you're you. from. Exactly. Basically. I, that's what I was trying to get to, but yeah, you did me to it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I jumped the gun. I'm so sorry. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so, I think I think one of these days I have to change my Instagram profile and just call Minnesota Enjoyment. Yeah. In wherever I can. Yeah. From. <laughs> and then I'll also specify like in London. Okay. But then actually uh, no, because when you're the Minister of Enjoyment, from one Minister of Enjoyment to another, mm-hmm. the enjoyment follows wherever you go. Yeah. Because exactly. when I'm in Uganda, it's Minister of Enjoyment <laughs> in Kampala, in yeah. Gulu, in Kiko, <laughs> wherever I am. Oh, so okay. the same for you. I feel like when you're somebody, when you're a lover of life, mm-hmm. you can go absolutely anywhere. Yeah, You always attract your tribe. I always say your vibe attracts your tribe. Mm-hmm. You always find people that you're able to gel with and enjoy life together yeah. and make the best memories that's what exactly. life's all about that's what life is all about and that's why i keep yeah. telling people one quick question what's what's your favorite hobby like what do you like to do my favorite hobby hmm can i think of three i think of yeah. three give me three one what... is drawing it's what drawing okay uh-huh oh my battery went on low power mode did you want to plug in your charger or something if i plug it there the phone won't stretch okay and that won't do okay so i will get my extension cable okay from upstairs uh-huh two seconds let's <laughs> take a break let's 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 <laughs> to call it to call it cool the angle. <laughs> i yeah. will charge that i'm charging all right so we were on the hobbies what are your yes hobbies so i would say hobby number if i'm to put them in a chronological order Mm -hmm. hobby number one walking okay i love walking i love taking walks they're so therapeutic Mm -hmm. sometimes with music in my ears sometimes without because sometimes i just want to take a breath to just feel my environment, feel the world. Yeah. And just really cool down and calm down. Feel the down. nature. Feel the nature. I love nature. Mm-hmm. So whenever I can just get in touch and just chill. Because especially like Western life is so demanding. And it's very go, go, go. Mm-hmm. 
So I feel like if you don't um, take enough initiative to make time for yourselves in the most natural setting, yeah, then you'll end up feeling like a bit of a computer, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Kind of have to reclaim that time for yourself. So that's my number one. Number two is drawing. Mm-hmm. I've always been an artsy, crafty girl. Yeah. From as young as I could remember, I was sketching, I was drawing. Before you know it, I was doing portraits, I was doing nice. hands, I was doing this. But then it went to chalk, painting, any mm-hmm. media. Yeah. Um, I just feel like it's, it's a great way to distress. When your mind is busy, mm-hmm. just put on a nice lo-fi playlist. Yeah. I do that um, too. You know? I don't draw, but I put on the, the playlist and just chill. Like I just, just zone chill. out. Yeah. They're so good. Oh my gosh, there's this SpongeBob lo-fi playlist that I'm mm-hmm. obsessed with at the moment. Yeah. And it's just the best background noise for any type of focus work you'd ever want to do. Yeah. I recommend it. Sponsor this video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell them, remind them. Remind them. <laughs> and third hobby i don't think i actually have one otherwise it would have come to my head so where the if if you're like i'm not gonna ask you to rank 10 but i'm gonna say if you were to rank 10 what Mm -hmm. number would you put food 9.6 9.6 so you're not really a a food person like trying out new foods or just like oh like 10 is like the yeah 10 10 is is like, like yeah, so like the law, one is a high and ten is low. oh, yeah. then zero point five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is very important. Okay, very. So if very if you put, if you put it as if you put it as zero point five, then mm-hmm. that means it beats um drawing, it beats walks. Oh hell yeah! Okay. Actually, it doesn't beat walks. Okay. So it's in between walks and drawing. Yeah. So so that's number two. That's number two. Food. It's crazy because I I don't know. It was just in my head. I was like, you look like a person who would like try to try, like who'd like to try different food. And in my head, the reason why I asked you how is because I knew food was going to come up somewhere. And when I didn't hear I was like, oh no, I got that wrong. But I was still t- I was still talking about I was still bring it up. So, so I'm happy to hear that you've met. You no, know, I love trying new food. I yeah. love it so much. I like that you can experience the world through food. Like how mm-hmm. magical is that, you know? Yeah. And if I wasn't so explorative, I wouldn't find my favorite wacky dishes that but probably like people from that country wouldn't even consider like their best favorite thing but I just Mm -hmm. love it so much I think my favorite cuisines Mm -hmm. definitely Mexican I love Mexican food Jamaican food Mm -hmm. I've I've had Jamaican food too and Japanese food I've had I think it's Japanese it's a hibachi it's in the US here. They call it hibachi, where you go and they make your food in front of you, and like they'll just cook like it. grill style. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a restaurant like in the US, hibachi. I think it's Japanese. Maybe it's Korean, because I know Koreans do a lot of Korean barbecue, but so do, it's a general but, Asian thing, yeah. like Chinese have hot pots and stuff. Uh-huh. But yeah. Yeah, I eat a lot of Chinese food too. Like, we're going to try out the Korean food when we're in Florida, but some of my friends were scared to try. Like, do you even what? know anything on the menu? Like, they looked up the menu. I was like, I don't even know anything on this menu. No. <laughs> so oh, my go. gosh. Let me give you a hack. Let me give you a hack. You'll never okay. grow food again. Listen, to, listen from one minister of enjoyment to the other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I am stuck, or see something on a menu I don't understand. These phones in our pockets are so handy. Google is my best friend. Yeah. Best friend. I will Google it, mm-hmm. what it looks like, 
I want to see all the images. <laughs> yeah. I want to see when it looks really bad uh-huh. and when it looks really good. When it looks <laughs> in the middle. So I know that, okay, based on this restaurant's about a 4.5 star. Mm-hmm. That means the food is probably going to be in this this tier, you right. know? Uh-huh. If it's got a two star, it's failed, it's food hygienic rating practices, it's going to be at this side. But I know what to expect, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, going on the place's Instagram yeah. and not going on their page, but going on the place and then seeing on the location. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh-huh. Changed my life forever. I gained nice. so many kilos to but prove you- it. <laughs> But you know, sometimes it's hard to change an African's heart, like especially guys. Like, yeah, you can't yeah. convince them unless they see it or unless they test it. But like, yeah, we that's how we missed out to try the Korean restaurant. It's so, definitely the best type of Asian cooking that I've experienced. Yeah, it's still new to me to say that it tops Japanese for me. Mm-hmm. But it is one of the best flavor profiles I'd recommend. All right. So I'll pose a question to you. Mm-hmm. When was the last when was the last time you went to Uganda? Uh, I just came back. You I just came, came back, back from three Uganda. Three weeks ago. Yeah. All right. And you said you usually go like every year. So yeah. I'm gonna let you just tell me your top five Ugandan restaurants, like oh where you would like to get food in you. It does not have to be like a Anywhere, never, 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 even though it's a Muchinamwandu, even though it's like in the Kafunda, yeah. So let's go top five. And if you're allowed, we can go top 10. Yeah. First place that comes to mind is August 80, Bokoto. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Priced really nice, cool service great vibe and the food is amazing they bring food on these amazing big platters mm. and it's delicious august yeah. 80 fully recommend doesn't break the bank and a great place for people after work mm-hmm. to come chill out you've meeting up with friends for a long for um it's been a while since you saw your friends go link up do you want to do... Sh- uh, anyway, I don't know if that's legal. Anyway, cut the door. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> um, but yeah, really nice establishment and amazing food. Number two, holy crap. I've been... Yeah, I've been on that one. Mm-hmm. Kololo. I love Kololo and I love mm-hmm. Muyanga. Mm-hmm. It, but when I go to Kololo, it's just for the views. Yeah. In Muyenga, I can concentrate on the actual food properly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the view at Kolo is, is pretty cool. Like, you can it's see, like, beautiful. the whole... Is it the five hills or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's really, really beautiful and peaceful. And it's the perfect brunch spot for friends, I found. It's mm-hmm. one of my favourite places. Another place. Number three. Tamarai. Tamarai. Where's that at? Tamarai is... I don't know. It was mm-hmm. dark. <laughs> but it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> you just get a border border and tell them I'm going to Tamarai. You'll get there. No, my cousin was like, oh, there's a restaurant that I really want to try. Mm-hmm. We're going to go. So I said, okay, let's go. Then we went. Did we go to border in a car? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. All I know is it was um it was when Museveni had put his foot down mm-hmm. and it was like break Open. if you break curfew you're getting chiboko. Yeah. Get chiboko. <laughs> so all I know is we left curfew is at nine. Mm-hmm. We live across town and we left the restaurant around 8 40. Mm-hmm. Curfew. <laughs> I wasn't looking for where we were. I was yeah. looking for a border to get us out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Tamarai, great place. Nice, authentic tasting Thai food. Really mm. nice. Yeah. Um, number four. Do you know what my guilty pleasure is? 
What is that? It's Momo Shawarma. Momo Shawarma. It's in um, Village Mall in Bogolobi. Okay. It's the greasiest um, shawarma you'll ever mm-hmm. have. Like the oil can fill up a car. It can yeah. fill up a V8. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a lot of good, it's a lot of oil. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of maputa. <laughs> I don't do good with too much oil. Oh, uh, then you should steer clear of Momo Shawarma <laughs> with yeah. all your life. <laughs> don't run. <laughs> Oh yeah, oil oil doesn't treat my stomach good. But it's delicious. Yeah. And like if I'm on an errand somewhere and I like I can stop by and make that happen, mm-hmm. I would. It would be yeah. like a nice guilty pleasure. But after getting to like say the wrap is about this big, mm-hmm. after getting to about here, yeah. you're like, oh, that's yeah. a lot of oil. And then you just <laughs> sit down quietly, yeah. and just go away. <laughs> The number five is really dead split between Cafe Java's mm-hmm. and Yugo Roll. Okay. Yugo Roll because it's so, it's such a nice way to like transform a Rolex without mm-hmm. taking it too far, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that about them. They have really nice juices, but they're just, I would say, nice service but the service is so slow like it takes ridiculously long yeah and in my head i'm like but surely you know this is a rolex shop Mm -hmm. like i would have thought you would have made like a million chapatis (laughs) what's really the delay like what's really going on (laughs) (laughs) and maybe that's just my western thinking of like quick fast food i don't know you go roll. I want better for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because just looking at the person and just, I was like, you know, I think Linda would be a great person. I don't even know how I knew that. Like, I think Linda would be a great person to just talk about food. I like, just talk about, <laughs> I have these questions just purposely for you. I don't know how. I literally, I don't how, know how you managed. I don't know. To guess my love for food. But. <laughs> Oh uh, my god, yeah. And eating in Uganda is a fantastic experience. Exactly. So now we got the top five, although you ranked two of number five. So what is the top five Ugandan food? Like I know you mentioned about the food in those places, but like there mm. could be another food that's not at Cafe Java's that you really like. So give me your top five Ugandan food. Do you mean like Ugandan like dishes? Um, any food like you've had in Uganda, it could be not Ugandan, but like that you like that's made in Uganda. You mentioned about like I don't know if they have Japanese. No, yeah, they do have some Chinese restaurant in Uganda somewhere. Uh, like kung fu was it kung fu? No, funga funga fang. It there was an old fang fang, 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 but that was yeah, old. Fang. Yeah, that was old. Then there's Nanjing. Mm-hmm. There's Izumi, which is Japanese, which is really good. Yeah. People argue that it's not good and it's just for slay queens, but that's <laughs> not my I'm there for the food. <laughs> slay queen. So, yeah, it could be any food that you, you've eaten in Uganda that you like. It could be a local food, anything. Just Take it wherever you want to take it. Food, a plate for me, mm-hmm. doesn't get better than corn kal, which is basically kalo. Kalo, yeah, I've had kalo. And then we have this, um, there's, um, it's called bar. It's like mm-hmm. greens with, it's pasted greens. Yeah. And it's just deliciousness. Attacking yeah. your mouth. <laughs> then is you that, have is that your up. local food? Like yeah, your, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. When I think about that food, that's mm-hmm. the food I think about when I think about like home or what's the best, like the the food that I like or something like that. That yeah. that plate of food, that's the first thing I think about. Do you, ever, do you ever make that like in London? Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, I make sure that inside this home, mm -hmm. it is black, yellow, red. I think DH I think DHL ships food to the US, so you can ship some color over here. <laughs> you guys don't got color over there? I don't believe you. <laughs> I think some people do. I only have like ngal ngano for chapati and kaunga. I make posho. Yeah. No way. And maybe like rice. No, Everybody has rice. No, Everyone every has rice. When it's I when I go to rice. visit my when I go to visit my aunts, like in Louisiana, she makes my toke chapati, like all the Ugandan food. Like Thanksgiving, we That's make like the make Ugandan food. It. Being Ugandan and away from home, like you have the desire for that food because in Uganda you can get it anytime you want. So like when you get it here, it means a lot because you can't get it every day. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You have number one um color. So we're going to five. Oh, yeah. top five. I was thinking the connection. The connection was putting you in a fight. Oh. I was like, we're gonna fight. Oh no, no, I said we're going to five. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe some enjoyment. The enjoyment is going to <laughs> <laughs> No, that's, a... that's why I'm the minister of enjoyment. It doesn't exactly. stop. Yeah. Um, because you were saying five. What five mm -hmm. foods? Yeah. Five food. Five. Chapati. Chapati. Uh huh. Um. Mm. Do you like mm. kawunga, posho? I do like kawunga with something like it has to be with a sauce it just can't be on its own otherwise Beans. i'd rather eat like big yes 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 <laughs> yeah i love beans yeah cooked by the right auntie or mom though like cooked mm -hmm. by the right person there's nothing worse than those almost boarding school like i was about to beans. bring that up I was about to bring that up. Like, thanks, like you didn't go to the <laughs> boarding school in Uganda. You would, you would hate beans. And Thank beans. God I didn't. Mm -hmm. And my mom used to tell me that there was there used to be like bean weevils inside yeah, like, exactly. the water. Uh huh. Nah. You eat that, and <laughs> if it feels like it feels like a tomato, like it feels like it's uh, onion and the spice you eat those bean weevils there and mix with beans it'll taste delicious oh god <laughs> <laughs> especially when you're boarding school but anyway I I wanted to slide that in there about mm. the food to so just uh, pick your brains on that I just see at least I guess right you love for food and I do love food sometimes but I'm gonna ask you about the few places like how I got to know you through a few podcasts and you mentioned, you said something in the mm -hmm. beginning about podcasts. Um, so tell me about how you yeah. got into podcasts and how you got to the two, five, six podcasts, which I need to tell my listeners that you're one of the hosts of the two, five, six podcasts, which I follow. I listen to, I love your guys work and you guys have a lot of fun. That makes me want to oh, get so makes much. me want to get a a co-host, but I I don't have one yet. But the problem with that is <laughs> I don't I don't want to get a co-host who doesn't match my energy of like when I want to record I want to record like I don't want somebody who's gonna slow me down. You know, like that's the reason mm, why sometimes I just go so. That's the thing. I mean, your setup is something I really love. Yeah. I really love it. It works. It's the first time I've seen it being done like really well and yeah. successfully in the non-shadiest way to any other person that's doing it. Like, mm -hmm. but like it was just the moment I came on like your page, it's just so polished. Then I'm clicking the links. I'm like, oh, it's him. Always oh, interviewing people. Always oh, interviewing <laughs> people on Zoom. This works so well. And it's yeah. like, okay, I'm seeing you through the camera, but there's another camera in the room. And I just mm -hmm. really love how it looks. I'm a big I fan. I, I, I really like that. I, 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 that th I'm going to pin this on my on my page for that. <laughs> That's going to be, it's gonna be in, the, in the first one. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. 
<laughs> how how did you get the love for podcasting and how you ended up on 256 podcast so funny story really one time I was hanging out with my friends this was um a good few years ago now and he decided that he wanted to start a podcast um he never actually got to start it then I think he's starting it soon anyway we went over to his house to do the pilot so he wanted to do a pilot episode I had never actually heard of what a podcast was from someone that I know Uh um so I was like what is a podcast he was like it's basically like a talk show ish kind of thing I said, well, I love to talk for England, so (laughs) yeah, I'll come. (laughs) We sat around, there was about five of us, and the premise of his podcast was, it's called, it was called Political Pre's, so Political Pre-Drinks, basically. So, as as the podcast goes on, you guys get drunker and drunker and the conversation <laughs> gets sillier and sillier. I yeah. mean, genius concept. I had to participate, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we've had a mind-blown conversation. Like, we talked about important things, silly things, mm-hmm. deep conversations about religion, and so much in between. And about an hour or two had... No, two hours had passed. Yeah, And then he was like, oh, yeah, guys, we're done. And then I was like, done what? I forgot that we were even doing a thing <laughs> because <laughs> I was just enjoying the conversation and enjoying All the right. drinks flowing. I was enjoying the whole vibe. Um, and then he was like, no, that's a podcast. It's basically. And I was like, wait, give me a second. You mean people do this. You can just go with your friends, chat on a mic and have a good time and that's podcasting that wasn't you know my small capacity to remember that but that was it (laughs) and then (laughs) he was like yeah and I was like well I'm starting a podcast Mm -hmm. I'm starting a podcast I love to talk yeah get me on there so then I started my own podcast like two or three months later Mm -hmm called linda loves yeah what are you gonna do because my name is linda and i love to love (laughs) okay (laughs) so i started that um it was real home based like it was um me and my friends on the couches no cameras at all just us on the mics Mm -hmm. and me just trying to figure it out on my laptop i said i don't mind how it comes out i just want to This feels like the first time I've done something and it never felt like work. It just felt like I get to just be me and just be Mm -hmm. expressive. And I really enjoyed that. So um, I did that for, I want to say a few months. I got about, how many episodes did I do? I don't think I reached over 11 or 12 episodes. Okay. I don't think I did. I'm so glad I did that podcast Mm -hmm. because when I was able to listen to it about six months later, I realized it was the worst thing I'd ever heard (laughs) in my life. (laughs) Was it the audio? Was it the words you were saying? What was wrong? What was bad about it? I mean, it was bad on every possible level. I mean, volume could be like here, Mm -hmm. like low as in you've put the volume on full blast on your phone, but on the yeah. audio, it's like all time low. Right. Then the very next track is the opposite. And it's exactly. like, it could burst your eardrums and actually have to go to the ER. <laughs> to <sort it> out. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. And then the topics and the way that I expressed myself. And I mean, I wasn't as... I don't want to say Uh well-spoken, but I don't think I had a grasp on how to jump from one topic to the other and how to navigate a conversation. I didn't have that skill innately. Uh I just knew that I loved to talk. I knew that I loved to talk to my friends. 
and I put that together yeah. not not realizing that there is a whole kind of art form to podcasting I feel like there's a there's like there's skill needed you have to know how to drive a conversation exactly. you don't necessarily need to know where you're going to end up at uh-huh. and that's what makes it so great and so enjoyable but you got to know how to like you're if you're the host you're the uh-huh. pilot you know what yeah. i mean uh-huh. you got to know where we're taking the rest of us where we're in the airport <laughs> in, in the in the plane bar yeah <laughs> <laughs> No, that's definitely true. That's definitely true. So after that, I realized this whilst I was talking to somebody and they were like, oh, yeah, oh, what you do podcast. And it'd been a long time since I filmed, no, since I recorded that last episode. So I listened to the few remaining tracks that I'd left up there on my SoundCloud. And I was like, this is the worst podcast I've ever heard. The content is terrible. The, I'm not even saying anything. I'm not saying real words. Right. My words are slurry as if I am drunk when I know I was sober. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> um, but I think I really needed to go through that to know, to take that step back and be like, hmm, I need to, I need to reformulate. Right. If I want to do this, I got to learn the art of speaking and being able to usefully mm-hmm. put a sentence together. Right. Not that I've started it. It's supposed to be A, B, C, and I've gone A, G, Z or something mm-hmm. like that. Because that's what I was doing. I kid you not. Right. I really hope that whatever I said, whatever I did, it's just been wiped anonymously off the cloud. <laughs> no one has to bump into that again. <laughs> no, uh, speaking of that, like, I, I get what you're saying. Because when I first started, I just picked up, actually, the first episode I've ever recorded, I just picked up my iPad mm-hmm. and just recorded without a mic. I was just using the On mic of the iPad. Yeah. No so way. that's the first one I started. I was like, because I just landed on Anchor. I was like, oh, you can make a podcast. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can do it. And then I just said, so like today I listened back. I never deleted my earlier episodes because I take that as a lesson. But today mm-hmm. I listened to those. I listened to those. I'm like, holy cow, I've come from far. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm still I'm still learning. Still like, like now I just bought a new mic because the way I've learned, I've taught myself is watching other podcasts. Like I listen to other yeah. podcasts and yeah. listening to other people and copying what they do to mm-hmm. incorporate that mm-hmm. to my, like I listen to a lot of Kevin Hart. Uh, I love Kevin Hart with all my life. I listen, I watch his <laughs> talk shows. I watch I listen to his podcast and like, and I drive like a lot. So I listen to a lot of podcasts and they mm-hmm. see how people talk and, that's how I've been able to teach myself, like my graphics too. Like I'll see these, I mean, these rich people, they have people doing their graphics. They have people yeah, running the yeah. cameras. So like I, I learn, but then I'm like, oh, how can I do that by myself? To, yeah. To, to use that. So, but I listened to my older episode. I'm like, what the hell was I even <laughs> saying? But also there's a difference too. Like when I'm speaking by myself, and when I have a guest. So I realized like my conversations flow better when I have a guest than when right. I'm talking by myself. Because you um, have that somebody to bounce off, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And my vibe, like if, when I'm talking to you, my voice is like way up, like it's normal voice. But yeah. when I'm talking by myself, like I'm just alone in the room, I'm going to be like, so today, guys, I just came. Right. Here, like, yeah. You know, yeah. like. <laughs> Yeah, your, you your, your vibe is low but like when we are laughing talking back and forth like it makes it enjoyable yeah. so i like those more but once in a while I'll, I'll jump in record by myself especially when i have something on my heart that i just want to pour out like i just want yeah to say, so like, i like I it i like it but yeah from so from there i took a well needed break from podcasting okay um and then I had the I had the thought to bring it back, but I didn't I didn't know how I was gonna do it. Then my cousin approaches me 
um, and she goes, I want to do a podcast. Um, so I'm giving her ideas. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is sick. Yes, do a podcast. You would be perfect on a podcast. Um, of course, I'm I'm not like alluding to joining, but yeah. I'm just happy that like my cousin, who's like the closest thing to me ever, also wants to get into something that I love. Like, come mm-hmm. on, let's all join the party. Um, after talking for a bit, she goes, I've been thinking, and would you want to be a co-host with me? Yeah. And I was like, me? <laughs> You want me to be your co-host? Yes, come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the birth of Point Blank Period, the podcast. Okay. okay. So yeah, we started that. It was going amazing. Like I loved it so much. I speak in past tense because we just haven't revived it post COVID. Okay. Because um the pandemic happened studios were closed we couldn't go anywhere mm-hmm. and that was that we came back into studio um to do a couple of recordings and then i think the studios closed again so we were like okay whatever yeah but i think that space between then and now has been really beneficial because in that space i've joined um 256 podcast which I'll, I'll I'll go into how I got there in, okay. a, in a small bit, but it's made it made me um, learn what to do and what not to do in a podcast, in terms of how to drive the conversations, how to engage guests, what works, what doesn't work, mm-hmm. what topics work, what doesn't work, what what do you feel fits your moral compass to talk about. What do you feel like you're going to get cancelled if you talk about right. and all the rest of it? Um, Q in 256. So um, Hakim, um, Jibs, um, Timo, um, and a few other people, they had created this, um, of course created by Hakim, but those were the other people that were on the team. Um, and it was amazing. It was the first podcast of its kind in our community. Mm-hmm. You know, all Ugandan, it's about Ugandans, but mm. everyone's from the diaspora. So it's something like for us, by mm-hmm. us. Yeah. And I just remember the buzz was really, really good. And it always has been, it's been consistently good, but. I just remember the feeling of seeing like the trailers coming out for the two, five, six podcasts come in and then the music is playing. And I'm like, okay, come on home flavor. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then I think it was a similar thing where we were all stuck at home. Mm -hmm. But before that, I bump. I met Hakim. We went to um, this talk show hosted by some um, some Ibo people from Nigeria. Okay. And they were having a conversation um, about Ugandan experiences versus Nigerian experiences, mm-hmm. and that's what their whole YouTube channel is about. Basically, comparing different cultures and just having interesting conversations about that. Right. So the host for that program had invited Hakim, myself, um, another girl called Lucia, who I'll talk about at the end when you ask me that special question. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and who else? Yeah, that was us three on the main panel for the Uganda side. So this was the first time that Hakim had been in a situation where he was, he was the only minority in the room as in he was the only muganda in the room okay Uh when everyone else was from like predominantly sort of northern or western tribes Uh whereas here in london there's a lot more um baganda people yeah to the point where when you meet somebody and you say that you're from uganda the first thing they'll say hey jamariko Jamariko." <laughs> and then you grew up like that's not my language, but like <laughs> the Uganda, yeah, it's cool. 
So um, I remember we had a really, really cool conversation. Um, and I was, it was the first time I'd met him and I was shocked by just the amount of information in here, you mm. know? Um, and we all spoke so well. We all gave really good points. And after that, we were like, whoa, like it was great to meet you. And then he was like, do you know what? This has inspired me. We're going to work. Don't yeah. worry. Couple months later, he's messaged me like, yo, we're going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to work. And yeah. um, I was really honoured when he asked me to be part of the team. And it's been just a trajectory of greatness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you um, guys work work great together. Like when I listen to your podcast and like everybody, like even Hakim was saying when he came on my podcast, like you are three different people with different vibes, but then all your vibes like kind of just add together and then make yeah, one. Literally, literally. Yeah, literally. And that's that's what makes it work. And I, I agree, like what where he saw. And it's worked all your guests and all the fun that you have on the podcast. It's it's really cool. Um, I'm a fan of your guys' podcast. I would say that. Thank too. you. Thank <laughs> you. But yeah, I just wanted to get a little bit of that and drive you to because to the towards the end of the, the show, we've been recording for over an hour now. Um, but the conversation it's is mad. Still... It only feels like 20 minutes. I That's know, right? So <laughs> <laughs> but Maybe we have a lot of conversation that I'll need to bring you back sometime and when I get another topic um, and then we kind of just talk. But you don't even need a topic. You just say, hey, you're here. And then yep. the conversation just starts. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to ask you, like, in all, what has been a life lesson like you've learned in life so far to this point? Hmm. There's so many. I'll get, can I give you two? Give me two. Yeah, that sounds about right. What you allow will continue. Mm. What I mean by that is whatever situation that you are being dealt with, any cards that you're being dealt with in life or any situation that has been inflicted upon you from someone else, if you keep on allowing people to violate you, then you're allowing them to continue. Mm -hmm. But the moment you step back and demand for your space and respect yourself enough, then they will know that they're not allowed to continue to harm your feelings or your well-being or anything like that. Right. I'd say that's, that's thing number one that is... Ever since it came in here, it stuck mm -hmm. and it's never left. That's really deep. Yeah, for sure. Two is confidence is what you make it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And don't rely on others to make you confident. Believe in your source. Yeah. Make up your parameters for yourself. For example, oh, me as Bonnie, I think I am this funny i think <laughs> i am the most handsome man uh -huh. i think i am the most smartest man you could believe thick create anything you want to believe and believe it because uh -huh. it's with your source that's how you navigate the world most people won't see you but they'll see your confidence uh -huh. and how you represent yourself and yeah don't ever be in a hurry for everybody to like you your vibe attracts your tribe. Just be exactly. confident. Just go for it. That's it. Minutes of enjoyment. Mic drop. <laughs> so and be, be, before your mic drop, um, what gets you excited about life? What gets me excited about life? God. God. Yeah. God. It's knowing that with every single day feels like another chance to do whatever you want to do or whatever you feel convicted to do in your life mm -hmm. you know like um anytime I have a podcast recording the next day I'll wake up feeling so excited mm -hmm. 
I bet like, thank God for bringing me this day, you yeah. know, thank God for making it happening, for making it happen. Um, I find God in the detail of every little beautiful thing in my life. And because of that, it makes me excited to live every day. Oh my God. Does that you, make sense? You, you just preached a whole sermon right here. Hallelujah. If, I, I think I should change the release date for this to come out on a Sunday <laughs> so people don't have to go to church and just listen down, <laughs> listen to you. Yeah. Church, is, church is done. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I've had a lot of fun uh, recording with you. I could sit here like for hours and just talk and talk and talk. But I, I think. Most people who are going to listen to us, they can only give us an hour or two. Or even you get lucky if somebody sits through it or not. But I mean, some... <laughs> but um, yeah, it was fun. Um, and I expected it because Hakim told me, hey, you're going to have lots of fun. But she's also going to speak says, I'm going to add <laughs> that to this episode. Do you so that you can hear what he's saying? Oh, everybody can hear what what he's saying, which was exactly what you did. So, <laughs> but but anyway, so this is the question that you were waiting for. Who mm -hmm. would you like to see on my podcast? And you're going to help me get the person here. I want to see you mm -hmm. interview a young lady called Lucia. Okay. She's Ugandan. Mm-hmm. I like to call her the Queen of the East. Okay. She's a public speaker. She's an idea curator. Mm -hmm. She is talented. Like she has a voice on her. Okay. She's driven. She's passionate. And she's like a walking, talking ambassador for her community. And I think she knows it. Okay. And we are so proud of her. She's like a gem. Nice. And we love her. And I'd love to just, yeah. Yeah. We've All spoken right. to her before, but like, it's different. I want to hear her from like, you know, in this platform. Yeah. Thanks for the recommendation. And no I'm going to, you're going to link me up and then I'll reach out to her and send her a request to see if she would love to be on the podcast. But once again, is there any other final word you want to say to the listeners? I want to say, first of all, thank you so much for bringing me on here. Mm. This has been so much fun. Mm -hmm. Like I've never met you before and we've just been chatting the whole <laughs> way. Like we've like, we're OBs and OGs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So thank you for the vibes. Mm -hmm. Um for your audience. <laughs> I'm one of your audience too. So hey us <laughs> guys. <laughs> hey teammates. Yeah. Um keep on staying plugged into the episodes. You already know it's always a good time on this channel. Keep up with your boy. Keep up with your girl over here. Fly to of enjoyment podcast. Fly on Minister of Enjoyment Airlines <laughs> to the 256 Podcast 2, where you also get your dose of UG diaspora vibes. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. But before you go, we're going to take a picture. Oh. Uh, got it. Ooh, All right. Ooh. Thank you very much and so we'll keep much. in touch. Yeah. Thanks. Absolutely. All right. Bye. Have a good night. You too. You too. Bye. Hey there. Uh, my name is Bonnie Hibuka, the host of the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. Thanks for listening and watching my podcast. Tune in every Saturday at 11 a.m. for a new episode of the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, share, and we appreciate it. If you can, leave a feedback on our podcast, please. Thank you very much.